Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this first Hugging Face video, I would like to show you how you can be hyper productive building, deploying, and testing NLP models using Hugging Face tool. In fact, we're going to be writing no code at all for the training part and maybe only 10 lines of code to deploy a web app for testing. Okay, so this is really, really an easy way to go end to end from your data set to a model that you can showcase in a web app. So what are we going to use for this? Well, we're going to use two Hugging Face tools. We're going to use Auto NLP, which as you can guess, is an Auto ML uh, tool for uh, transformer models. And uh, we'll just bring our data and Auto NLP will automatically fine tune um, the best models for this data set and the task type that we select uh, without us writing a line of code, without us managing any infrastructure. Okay, so this is a really, really cool one. And the other one I'm going to use is called Spaces. And Spaces lets me uh, and you uh, write uh, just a few lines of code and deploy a, a test app that can uh, showcase your model for you know, quick demos, POCs, maybe more. And you can use either Streamlit or Gradio to do this, okay? And I promise it's very little code. And as everybody knows, I'm an awful uh, UI developer. So if I can do it, trust me, anyone can. Okay, let's get to work. And let's first talk about the data set and the problem we want to solve. In this example, I'm going to use the IMDB data set which contains positive uh, and negative movie reviews. And we're going to use this data set to train a sentiment analysis model, okay, which is a really popular use case. Lots of uh, companies want to build uh, text classification models, and you could be using your tweets or your emails, uh, you know, any, any text uh, that you'd like really to train the model. Okay, so I download this data set from Kaggle. Um, let me zoom in a bit. Uh, it's not huge, okay? And it's already split for test and train and validation. And it's a CSV data set, so it's really what you would think. Uh, two columns, uh, the actual movie review, which is text, and the, the label. It's called label, okay? Zero means negative uh, movie review. One means positive movie review, okay? Now that we have a data set, let's see how we can build models. So first, of course, you should log in to the Hugging Face website, uh, go to huggingface.co slash auto NLP, join the auto NLP beta, and then you can click on connect to your dashboard. Okay, fine. Uh, so let's create a new project. And yeah, we'll call this one IMDB. Mo HF. Okay. Uh, all right. Task types. So we can work with text classification binary, text classification multi class, token classification, uh, QA, summarization, or text scoring. Okay. So here, sentiment analysis for positive and negative sentiment. So it's, of course, a binary text classification. Model choice. We could try uh, and pick um, our own models from the hugging face up, but no, let's trust Auto NLP to do the right thing and we'll just go and, uh, and let it pick our models automatically. Okay. Language is, of course, the language of the data set. Uh, so those reviews are in English, but see, you could use quite a few different languages and, of course, Auto NLP would go and pick models that have been pre trained on those languages. Okay. And finally, how many models do we want to do we want to train? So we can go to from five to 100. And I'm pretty sure Ludicrous is a Tesla reference. Uh, yeah, I'm ac actually quite sure of that. So anyway, um, let's go and yeah, let's go and stick with 15 models. Okay. So that's all the information we need to uh, provide, really, and we can create the project. 
right? And as you would think, the only missing bit is we need to pass data, right? So why don't we do that? And yeah, let's try and select train and validation. Okay, so train CSV is actually the training set. Text column is actually uh, the one that the models expect. Okay, here, that data set happens to have the right names uh, for columns, but this could be called review, right? And this could be called sentiment. So this way we can easily map the column names in the data set to the actual feature names for, uh, for training. Okay, so let's add this to uh, auto NLP. And of course we need to do the same for, uh, for the validation data set, right? Add to data set. Uh, if we selected auto, if we had a single file, right? We could just uh, give a big file to auto NLP and it would automatically split it for, um, for training and validation. But here, okay, we, we can pass those two chunks. Fine, and then uh, it's all good, so we can go to trainings. Okay, and we get uh, an estimate of cost. And as you can see, you know, the ballpark estimate is about $10 per model. Okay, so that's fine. You can just launch training, and that's not fine. Of course, you can just go and uh, and you know go back and change the number of jobs. Okay, all right. So here we want to start training. So let's just click on this. And yes, that's what I want to do. Okay, and off it goes. So first of all, it's going to process the data. Um, you know, these are NLP data sets, so tokenization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Going to take place. And then, you know, really quickly, we see our uh, 15 jobs being queued, starting to train, right? Uh, and of course, they have uh, funny auto-generated names. Um, and once they start actually running and publishing metrics, uh, we'll see those metrics uh, in here. Okay. So for now, let's just pause the video, wait for those jobs to actually start doing something useful, and we'll be right back. After a few minutes, we see that some jobs have been stopped uh, because you know they're not promising. Um, so uh, the good news is. Uh, you're not going to get billed for those. Okay, so these are just failed attempts. And uh, yeah, we'll keep focusing on the other ones, right? So let's wait a few more minutes and we should see metrics. So now models are starting to report uh, metrics and um, we can see the top model so far, which, uh, which has this little uh, gold star here, right? And of course, if we go to metrics, We'll see the, the leaderboard uh, with loss, accuracy, precision recall, AUC, and F1. And of course, you can uh, you know, sort them depending on uh, which metric is the most important to you. Okay, oh, and here's another one, right? So we'll just wait and uh, until this completes and we'll see where we land. <laughs> What's the top model? And uh, then we'll see how we can predict with it and deploy it in a web app in a very few lines of code, right? Okay, stay with me. So we're now about 42 minutes into the training job and we can see some jobs are, are complete and some are still going. And for now, the best job has reached 94.08 accuracy, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, let's see if the... The other ones can catch up, right? So the, the sardine is leading, but you know, the rhino could be catching up, who knows? Let's see, let's wait a little more until all those jobs complete and then we'll call the winner. After about two hours and 16 minutes, training is complete. And so now we can see the leaderboard for our models and the sardine is the winner. The rhino didn't quite catch up, okay? So once again, we can see the metrics in here. And, you know, I guess we want to know more about this uh, top model. So we can just click on it and we can view this model on the Hugging Face Hub because all models are automatically pushed there. Okay, 
So you can go and inspect uh, all uh, all those models right there. So the top one is this one, and uh, we have tags as well, saying well this is a Roberton model. Uh, fine tune on English, obviously, right? Um, and we can quickly test it right there, just like any other model. So let's go and try that. And I'll use my uh, favorite worst movie of all times to test it. Okay. Cute. And so the model is loaded right now, and, and we'll, see, uh, we'll see a prediction for this, right? And I think this is kind of a negative review, right? Should have a very high probability for zero. Let's see. Let's see how we do here. Right. Oh yes. Okay. Very negative review. No surprise. Right. So we can quickly test it like this. Um, if we want uh, to deploy it somewhere else, uh, of course we could use uh, inference on the uh, Hugging Face platform. Um, and we could deploy it on SageMaker. I guess we'll do this in another video. Um, what else can we do? Of course, we can see the files. Uh, so we see the model, we see the tokenizer, we see the model config. Okay, we see exactly which architecture was used. And we can see hyperparameters. And then, you know, we could start from there manually and we could keep tuning and try to squeeze a little more accuracy. Uh, so let's uh, try and use the model. So by default, all those models are private. So I'm gonna make this one public and I'm gonna switch to a notebook here on Colab. So I just installed transformers and I can use this model in a hugging face pipeline right one line of code and i can just go and predict with it okay so if i want to work in a notebook uh, this is super easy uh, so we can clone the repo let's just grab the model name and we can just clone it too all right um all right so yeah plenty of ways uh, to to use the model Okay, um, so I'm gonna pause the video here and um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can very easily deploy this using spaces. So building a, a small web app to go and test the model. Okay, so stay tuned and uh, go and check out part two uh, for ML hyper productivity with Hogging Face. See you soon.